Hello, this is Samse again from GamingOnLinux.com and today I'm going to talk to you about Automata Empire. So Automata Empire is a fairly unique RTS that has an interesting way you control your army. Other than that, it's a, well, it's a somewhat a traditional RTS game, but let's get to the interesting part here. So, like the name implies, your army consists of automata. You are basically in control of an empire full of automata. And the automata are sort of like these blobs that have a fairly random way they move. They don't really have uh, any AI to speak of, really. They move in random directions, well, at least somewhat random directions, and they don't really do much other than that. And you cannot control them directly, you cannot like click on them or drag a box around them and then right click and move them somewhere. That simply doesn't happen. Instead, you need to control your army indirectly. So you need to sort of urge them to move in certain directions because they will probably not do it by themselves. They move very randomly and especially like in the wild they, they are basically useless unless you sort of get them to move in the right directions. Uh, the methods of movement are basically as follows. So you have catapults, you have roads, and you have taverns. Catapults are very simple. They simply, if a blob or an automata steps on the catapult, it will throw the automata in a certain direction and a certain length. So they, it, it's a very quick way to move the automata around but it can sometimes be a little bit difficult to get them exactly where you want them to be, and uh, sometimes it's a little bit finicky. Another way is roads. So you can build roads, which are basically, if you have played Dwarves, which is an interesting game, I do recommend that you try it out, you can sort of set up these arrows, and the automata, when they step on the road, they will automatically move in the direction the arrow is pointing. So it's a very simple way to create a sort of a network of roads where blobs will move exactly where you tell them to. Of course it requires you to build the road network and I'll, I'll talk to you about like building buildings a little bit later. The third thing is taverns. The taverns don't exactly help automata move around but they will instead collect automata. So if, if a if an automata enters a tavern, it will stay around the tavern and that way you can sort of set up staging grounds and you can sort of collect your forces together in order to defend and of course to collect an army and then you can send them with a road network or catapults to the enemy base. These are the ways you sort of uh, herd your army in the direction of the enemy and of course the enemy does mostly the same. Let's talk a little bit about the automata themselves. So there are varying levels of, of automata. The low level automata are very very random. They will simply move in a very random direction and they are also very weak. The higher level automata will be a little bit more intelligent in their movement and they are less random. So the higher level automata will either move in a certain direction or if they are the highest level, which is 4 I think, they will actively seek out enemies and they will try to hunt them down. And of course, the higher level the automata is, the more powerful it is in combat, so a higher level automata will destroy a lower level automata, it's, it's that simple. And the combat is fairly simple. When automata collide, when a friendly automata and, a, and an enemy automata, when they collide, the one that has more power will survive and it will lose a little bit of its power so higher level automata will become lower level automata but the enemy will be destroyed and that's how it works. You also have a couple of buildings that will allow you to equip your automata with items that will make it more powerful. So you have the arsenal which equips the automata with a spear and that makes the automata a little bit stronger in combat so it can possibly destroy a higher level automata. The other item is the shield 
which I think does basically the same thing, and I think the most powerful automata is the level 4 automata with both a shield and a spear. I'm not entirely sure how they act, like is the shield better if the automata is being attacked, and I don't even know if there is a difference between attacking and defending. I it's not explained too clearly, I'm sure the tutorial text, there isn't a, like a playable tutorial, but there is a text tutorial that you can read. I'm sure that will explain it more clearly, but as far as I know, there isn't a difference. I, I think it's just the more you have, the more power you have. And uh, these automata are also your only resource. There is no, like, you don't mind resources or gather resources or anything like that. Instead, the automata themselves are your resource. So in order to build, you need to have a certain amount of automata around the area where you want to set up a building. And the buildings of course have a certain cost. Roads are fairly cheap, I think they are only one automata per like block. But the arsenal and the armory are, uh, I think they are a little bit more expensive as well as the tavern. So in order to build something you need the automata to be around the area where you want to set up that building. So you need to move your armies both to attack and also to set up your, like, set up bases, set up uh, defenses and also to set up your road network. So you cannot simply place buildings all over the place, you need to actually have your army in that location in order to set up your base there. And that of course means that blobs will also be exhausted when they are, when you build something. So when you set up a building, a certain amount of automata will be destroyed. And that means you need to create more, otherwise the game will be quite short because you only start with like, I, I think like maybe 20. Um, so the way this works is kind of like, the, the game is inspired by Conway's Game of Life and it sort of works a little bit like that but not quite. The way more blobs are created is by friendly blobs colliding with each other. And when they do, they will first produce higher level automata, but they will also create more automata. So they kind of like split up into smaller automata, and that's how you get more of them. I'm not entirely sure how it happens, but I know if there are blobs concentrated in an area, more blobs will sort of come out of it. And usually you use taverns as a way to produce more more of the blobs. So you need to have a certain amount of blobs actually present in a tavern in order for you know the tavern to produce more automata. They will also, if they happen to collide with each other in the field, so outside of taverns, there is going to be a little bit of growth, but it's a little bit random if it happens there. So the taverns are your main way to actually produce more automata. The game actually has a fair amount of game modes, which are a little bit... Uh, uh, I haven't seen these game modes really in strategy games. There is the normal deathmatch, which is basically... it's called war, and the idea is that you destroy all the enemy automata, and that, that's it. There is another game mode called Stronghold, I believe. Destroy the stronghold, destroy the castle or something, where you have to destroy an enemy stronghold, which is protected a little bit by your bases, and you need to protect your own while you destroy the enemy stronghold. Then there are basically game modes like uh, Capture the Flag and King of the Hill. They are named a little bit differently, but that's how they function. And it's a little bit odd to see those in a strategy game, because normally you don't see those in uh, an RTS. You typically only see them in like third person and first person shooters. There is also the game mode called Migration, which uh, plays around a th like a, a third side. You have the normal empires, which are of course computer controlled at the moment, I'll come back to that a little bit later. But you also have this side called the Zombies, which is a, it's an optional feature you can enable in the other game modes, but in Migration it's a must. Basically there is a huge army of zombies that will be moving north and you need to also move north and the last empire alive because it's not possible to stop the zombie attack but the one that survives the longest will win and that, that's a fairly interesting game mode. 
But yeah, there are a couple of game modes, and in my opinion that's a very nice way to increase the amount of entertainment in the game, because you have multiple ways of playing it. And despite, there, despite the fact that there are a fairly limited number of methods, you can actually affect the armies, because you, you don't have direct control over anything. There's still a fair amount of strategy involved, and I do have to say the AI plays the game in a quite intelligent manner, and I have gotten myself killed or nearly killed many times by the AI, and I have mostly been playing on the lower difficulty, and I, I, I'm still afraid of like moving to the higher difficulty AI. Graphically, Automata Empire is a fairly Spartan game. It's not... Uh, I wouldn't use it as a GPU benchmark by any means, um, but it also performs well, and because of the fact that the game looks fairly simple, it also should run on pretty much all modern systems. I mean, I have tried it on my Intel HD Graphics 3000 laptop, and it works just fine there. It also runs fine on my Radeon R7 370, system here, which is my main rig, and the only time there was any like dipping in the frame rate was when there were like thousands of automata on the screen, and that only tends to happen towards the end of the game, so at that point the game is not going to last too long anyway, so it's not really a problem, and even then it maintained a 50 to 55 frames per second and it's, it's entirely playable considering the game. It had some drops down to the 40s, but it was high 40s, so it, it's not, pro not a problem. On the Intel laptop, it might start to go towards 30, but even then I think the game would still be playable, and like I said, it happens in the late game, and the late game doesn't last too long anyway, so I don't think it's going to be a huge problem. Migration might have uh, some problems because there are simply so many zombies around, but even then I do think that basically all systems that have at least some 3D graphical capabilities should just run the game fine. I mean, I wouldn't try this on a, an early 2000s system maybe, but even something like that might be able to push a couple of frames out of this game. The big issue with this game is the fact that there is no multiplayer at the moment. It's only limited to single-player AI skirmishes, and there is no campaign. So you won't be seeing a story or anything like that in the game. I, I don't think that's even planned. The multiplayer itself is planned, but it's currently not in the game, so you cannot play the game against other humans. You need to play against the AI, and I do have to say the AI has been fairly good at the game, so I don't have a huge problem with it, and I normally don't even play any any games really in multiplayer, unless they are multiplayer-only games, in which case, yes, I might play them in multiplayer. But I do tend to sort of gravitate towards single-player anyway, so it's not a huge problem for me, but some people do see multiplayer as a must, and in this game, it would really fit if the game had multiplayer. I think it would be a great addition, and I do think the devs also agree, and they are reworking the game so that they can actually get the multiplayer in. Not sure if there is an ETA on that, so do check out the Steam forums for the games if you are interested in this. But keep in mind that at this very moment, it's not a thing, so don't buy it for multiplayer just yet. Overall, I do like Automata Empire quite a bit. Uh, in my opinion, it's a very refreshing game. It's definitely different from all the other RTS games that I have seen, and in my opinion, it's very nice to actually see something like this. It's relatively simple. Uh, learning the mechanics might take a moment because you need to, you know, understand what each building does and stuff like that. But it's still simple enough to actually learn in about maybe. 10 minutes and you will get the hang of it, and you can start actually planning your strategy. And the style, it works. Even though the graphics are fairly simple, I don't have a problem with it. It looks just fine for me. And I actually like the Spartan graphics because they make it very easy to understand what is actually going on in the game, which is important in a strategy game. Though the lack of multiplayer is probably an issue for some, so I do definitely hope that they get that sorted out, but I don't actually have that many complaints about the game. I, I, it runs fine, 
it's an interesting game. It probably isn't for everyone and I haven't like felt the need to constantly play it, but it definitely was an interesting experience and I do think that I will be playing it in the future. For now I have played it only for a little over two hours. I haven't put that much time into it because games like Stellaris happen, but I do definitely see myself playing more of it and I do recommend that you check it out. It's it's an interesting game, it's very refreshing, it's unique, and I liked it, so maybe you will too. So do check it out, it's on Steam I believe, it might also be available on other platforms, but at the moment I don't think so. But anyway, it's on Steam, I will have all the platforms in the article, so go check that out. Anyway, that has been me and of course Automata Empire and we will see in future live streams and videos.